I'm excited to introduce, introduce you guys to the crew. Ron Warner has over 20 years of IT and security experience and is a noted consultant, speaker, and writer in their security in industry. As president and chief security evangelist at Cyber AAA, he works as a security consultant delivering awareness, performing security risk assessments, and advising small, medium, and large organizations. Ron has established the Cybersecurity Studies Program at Bellevue University. He's an NSA center of, or the Bellevue University is a center of ac academic excellence where he still teaches. And he has been a featured speaker at Omaha TEDx, um, International Information Systems Security Certification Consortium, ISACA, and RSA conferences but his crowning achievement was being selected as the Air Force Association Cyber Patriot Mentor of the Year in 2014 for his coaching with high school students in cybersecurity. Ron loves to talk to others who are passionate about security and privacy, so we're lucky to have him here today. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. <laughs> and then Lisa McKee is a Senior Manager of Security and Privacy Solutions at Protivity. She has nearly 20 years of IT industry experience in cybersecurity, information technology, vendor management, privacy, US and international data, privacy laws, software development, IT audit, compliance, PCI, risk and government. Um, Lisa assists companies conducting security assessments by implementing privacy and compliance programs and managing PCI oversight. She is a highly regarded consultant in the Mid Midwest IT industry and a regular featured speaker at International Information System Security Certification Consortium, ISACA, Nebraska CERT, F2F Interface, and ASCX9 and IIA. Lisa is also a member of the IAPP National Privacy Engineering Advisory Board and passionate about privacy and security. So thank you, Lisa, for joining us tonight. Without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Lisa and Ron for a presentation on keeping your family safe in this crazy online world. Thank you, Amity and Gina and everyone else for your time. Um, Ron and I are super excited to be here and uh, share our learnings and information on how to keep your families and uh, your companies safe online. So uh, without further ado, uh, some housekeeping rules that we'd like to go over with you. Um, there's just a, a we have no uh, rules per se. Ron and I are both, you know, open books. We just kind of fly through this. We've done a few of these together. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Ron will pop questions out at random times to just say if you know something and drop them in the chat. Um, we will be monitoring that. And if that's not working, you know, just you give a shout out. Uh, we try to keep this informal, uh, open discussion to keep people in our, interacting and engaged. Um, so hopefully you'll have as much fun and learn things as we are having fun in presenting this information to you. Um, don't take everything we say as crystal, uh, you know, it, Things change, security's ever changing, privacy especially. Um, I'm a privacy professional, laws and things are constantly changing. So um, what works today um, may not work tomorrow, may not work when you try it at home, but please reach out to us. Um, this is stuff that's very near and dear to Ron and I. We enjoy sharing this information with those um, around us. It's stuff that we're very passionate about. So if you're trying these things at home um, and it doesn't work, just, just reach out to us. Our contact information is at the end of the slides. Um, our goal and intent here is for you to take information away that you can use to protect yourselves, your families, and your companies and those around you. So hopefully you sit back, enjoy your glass of wine or cocktail or beverage or whatever it was that you chose at the beginning and, and uh, enjoy the presentation as we go. And, and, um, and as I said, if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat. Ron, anything else Lisa? you want to add? Lisa, I yeah. have a, clear, a clarity question. Sure. So in case of fire, break glass. I'm supposed to break my wine glass. That's <laughs> just to see if you're paying attention. People often just don't read what's right in front of them, which often leads to that security problem that we run into. So it's, it's the idea. Have fun. 
find a nugget that you're maybe you want to learn more about this is the opportunity to ask not only lisa and myself but bring it out to the community because like amity and gina said it's we all need to be working together to build our community and that's why lisa and i are passionate about this because we're in this world of hurt not just because of covid although that seems to have exacerbated it but you know we're all connected now, even more so. And our kids, it used to be we could limit our kids maybe to an hour of computer time a day, and now this is how they have to learn. And that's the point of this, is how do we protect ourselves, our family, our businesses? Uh, so if you have why questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, Lisa and I are here to help answer your question. So Lisa, why is this an important topic for you? This is something that's important because to me, it's it's ever changing. It's something that I don't feel people uh, seem to understand because it is constantly changing new laws, new regs, new security requirements, and just new tools and technologies, right? There's the TikTok that's come out, there's Slack that's come out, you know, uh, people, uh, different, different generational gaps sometimes that, you know, why can't we just use the tools that we've had around? Microsoft works and 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 some of those old technologies work why do we have to have new ones and so that's why it's passionate to me because I enjoy helping others learn those new technologies where where they may struggle or where they may simply not understand and so that's that's why I enjoy this and Lisa and I are both parents and children of parents who now are on the internet we hop to the next slide. We'll go to a first poll if you'd be so kind, Gina. It's always fun, the background noises. So the first poll question is, uh, ha have you been a victim of cybercrime? Maybe somebody that you know has been a victim. You can select multiple op options. So you've been a victim. Maybe somebody in your family's been a victim, a friend, a coworker. If nobody that you know of, you select the bottom choice. All of the above, select them all. And there's um, no shame about being a victim. I mean, we're just taking this poll just to level set the audience. But that's actually part of the message I want to make sure it gets out from this. We want to be there to help victims. And we have numerous resources at the end. Uh, when we get closer to the end, I'll share a Google link where we have the slides. And you're free to take these slides and share them as well. So do you know how are we looking with the polling? We'll let you share that whenever you're ready. There we go. Well, to the 31% that have never been a victim, I just want to say you're pretty darn lucky because I have been a victim multiple times, and so I'm kind of jealous. Ron, what's your take on these results? It affects us all, and you can see that there's multiple answers to this where it's usually someone we know within our sphere of influence, and that's why also we encourage you to gather this information so when someone comes to you, it's actually happened to my son. He sent me a text over the weekend. Oh yeah, my debit card you know, was hacked and I need to get a new one. And I'm like, what? You know, so it can happen to anybody. And just because we're security and IT professionals doesn't mean it won't happen to us. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, part of this tie is what we call the identity paradox. And if you're paying attention, we're gonna have a quiz here in just a minute. But Lisa, maybe if you can talk to us a little bit about online identity and do we, how do we know who we're talking to online? I mean, how do I know this is the real Colleen Schenker? The, the fact is, Ron, that we don't, right? And so I grew up with the song, I grew up listening to country music, and there was a song called um, Online by Brad Paisley. And so the, the whole song is about you can be anybody that you want to be. In your basement, you're just the average Joe, right? But online, you're this famous person that lives in Malibu and drives a fancy car and has a, you know, lavish job and, and, and online you can, you can do that, 
because nobody knows. And that's why we have people that have fake identities. And, and online, we can, we can post things and, and make them whatever view or perspective we want people to know about our lives. And we see that with people around us, right? There's people that post every little thing about themselves. Well, I just fed my kids breakfast, and then I took them to school, and then I did this. Or there's those that say, you know, that just post once a month and, oh, I went on vacation or I went to the grocery store. So you can literally, you own your own lawn footprint and it's whatever you want it to be. The first trivia question, and the winner will get an Infotech ticket. For, so for Infotech in November, the cartoon on the right, what year was, the, was it originally published? It was really one of the uh, most popular cartoons ever in the New Yorker magazines. So this will also test your Google skills. How quick can you Google on the internet? No one knows you're a dog. So it'll be the first right answer, or if I don't see one within, say, 30 seconds, then we'll just pick you know, the first closest answer. Good, we're seeing, and please use the chat uh, to talk amongst yourselves as well. Ding, 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 we have a winner, and it was Tanya beating out, I believe it's Tracy Kempke, by the nose. Uh, Tanya, it is 1993. Year after I was born. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been having this problem of the identity paradox. The story I like to tell is my daughter, who's now 20 years old at Lincoln, studying environmental sciences. Uh, when she was, used to be younger, played on the Xbox. And I go and ask, so who are you talking to? Oh, it's Tony from Tennessee. And I'm like, how do you know it's Tony from Tennessee? Oh, come on, dad, you're paranoid. I'm like, yeah, and that's just my job as a parent and as a security professional. The idea is to know where we're going on the internet because the internet is like any big city. It's got some wonderful places to go and some places you want to stay away from. Where we see this is the world's biggest data breaches. You can go to this website, informationisbeautiful.net, to learn more about them where your identity may have been compromised. I really like this as a demonstration website to show people on all of the different places our identity has been stolen. So I love the, the chat. The kids used to type POS thinking you didn't know what they were taught that you were paying attention right know the acronyms do you know what brb is or b-i-a-b be right back uh, back in a bit so know that your tla's three-letter acronyms that's just a fun thing lisa we're seeing more and more internet of things all around us what should we be concerned about with whether it's a watch or the amazon device i have listening in right now so, Ron, with those devices, it's more the security of those devices, right? We're connected more than we ever have been. Um, and it's easy to just plug stuff in, but they're listening. They're connected to our lives, and people don't realize that, right? Amazon Echoes and things like that are listening. Your refrigerators are doing things that you may not realize. Your security cameras are doing things. Baby monitors. There are so many different articles and things um, that are defined as Internet of Things technologies that are collecting information about us that we don't realize. So my advice to people is follow those manufacturer um, installation directions and make sure that they're secure when they're installing them. Use internet uh, security passwords and things like that. Follow the instructions. Make sure whatever you're purchasing, understand those risks. I'm curious how many people here have, say, a thermostat. I, I do have an internet-connected thermostat, and I love it because when my son was younger, he's now also down in Lincoln studying. He's a football player, big kid. He would get hot in the middle of the night, and he'd He's like, Dad's asleep. I'm going to crank down the air conditioner. I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm freezing. What was really cool is I could take out my phone and adjust my air conditioner. Now I can just do it with my voice. So it's very convenient. And it's that always that trade-off between convenience and maybe security and privacy. I did want to ask you a question, Lisa, about security and privacy as the region's uh, privacy expert. 
how would you define the difference between security and privacy? So security is the systems and the devices where the data is stored. So that's your smartwatch, your thermostat, databases, networks, when we talk about organizations. The, the, and then the data, right? So privacy is how you protect that information and where they're stored. So we'll get into how as we as individuals, what, our, uh, what are steps and measures that we can take to protect our information and protect our privacy. But that's how I would separate the difference between security and privacy. So privacy is more about protecting our personal data and it's more individual rather than security. So how would you define you know, what we need to be looking for? And actually, I'm just going to move to that next slide, Lisa. Maybe if you can talk about personal information and how we leak it all over. Yeah, so we don't realize as individuals the information that's being collected on us or what even privacy uh, or personal information is nowadays. It used to just be, you know, basic uh you know, information, uh, name, address, birthday, you know, though there was about 20 uh, identifiers 10 years ago that we would say, oh, that's PII. And it used to be these, you know, 20 to 30 fields. Well, now with the new data privacy laws, there really is no end and start to what is personal information. It's anything about you as an individual, or your family, or whomever, it could be an organization, but anything that identifies a living individual is considered PII. If you can take that information and get back to a living individual, it's personally identifiable information. So let's, so if you look at all, some of these identifiers that are on this image, right, your marital status, that's personal identifiable information. Your license plate number, that's on the DMV as registry information, that's personal. Um, your driver's license number, your passport, um, your online profiles, people don't think about that, but online profiles as well. IP addresses. You can find somebody just by geolocation and IP address. That's also personal identification. So it takes what we used to once think of, you know, 20 or 30 personal identifiers and now just blows that out of the water. And it makes it really hard now to protect our information and our identity because there really is no start and stop and every law breaks it down differently. So I'm going to kind of jump ahead a slide a, a little bit, but I'm going to keep this. I just want to show where you can learn where your information has been compromised. A fun website is called Have I Been Pwned? Uh, and if you're not familiar with the term P-W-N-E-D, by the way, if we ever say something you don't know, please ask it in the chat. Uh, that's what we're here for. Pwned, though, is one of these gamer and hacker terms. It was actually came from a computer game where... They were meant to type owned, but it was a typo by the developer. You can go to this site. It's run by uh, Troy Hunt, well-known cybersecurity individual, does a lot of research, but you can see where your information has been compromised. Type in your email address. So I'll use my Bellevue email. <gasps> oh no, pwned. I love doing the Mr. Bill voice. My, my email was pwned in two different breaches in 2018, the ADAPT breach and the Apollo breach. But let's see what of my PII has been compromised. Well, let's see, my Bellevue email address. Okay, I'm cool with that. My employer is Bellevue, no problem there. My title, I work there, okay. My name, phone number, physical address, and social media. To be honest, I don't care. All of this is information that is pseudo public for me anyway. And if I ever have a student who said, well, professor, I couldn't find you on the internet, face palm, you know, SMH, shake my head. So if your kid put SMH in a text about you, well, then you know. Um, but the, be aware how your email has been used. This is all part of something known as open source intelligence. And Lisa, you actually just went through a, a university class where you had to perform 
a little bit of open source intelligence. I did. I actually have had, I, so the FBI offers courses in OSINT, and then I actually had to do um, a class or an exercise as part of my PhD program. So OSINT is basically taking these qualifiers and it's open source intelligent, and it's looking throughout, it's scouring the internet to see what information can you find about you. So going out to Google and saying, uh, you know, Lisa McKee in quotes, what is, does it return? Or Lisa McKee plus Nebraska, what does it return? And, and, and it's, a, it's tools and techniques that people use to figure out where are um, attacks happening and where are things happening or, or even in investigations. But we as private citizens, we can do this too. There's... Um, it's free tools, it's free information, it's using Google, it's using these websites such as these that are listed on your screen. So it's a great way to find out what information is really out there about me. And those websites like the whitepages.com or all those, hey, find out if so-and-so's in, you know, has, uh, you know, public uh, records, you can actually click and respond to them and say, I want to be taken off of your site site and you can actually get your information erased and there's steps that you can go through for that too. So you have the right um, to, to own your privacy and to own your identities. So let's talk next about what keeps you up at night because the internet's a scary place, wonderful place too. I mean, if we didn't have the internet, we wouldn't be able to meet right now. Let's turn to our next poll if you'd be so kind, Gina. You bet what are you concerned about? Wait a minute. Begin to think. And of course, this is not the exclusive list. And you can, so vote early, vote often. Okay, maybe not. Our election is just coming up uh, very soon. There's things that may not be on this list. So if there's things that keep you up at night that's not on that list, feel free to drop it in the chat. So one thing that keeps me up at night is that, you know, my data gets my data gets stolen, not so much identity theft, but more like a ransomware, right? Say something happens and my, my data gets stolen. I can't get to my pictures or I can't get to data on my laptop, you know? So if there's something else that keeps you up that's not on this list, or for me, it's also maybe that something happens to my child, right? We talked earlier before the meeting about just sharing Google location, safety, right? Maybe something happens to my kid and I can't get to her. So if you have other things that aren't on this list, please feel free to drop, drop them in the chat. There's a lot of things that we could have put in a poll for options, but we, we try to keep it brief. Right. So we've got so 31 of 35 reporting back. I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one. I realized I was muted earlier when I was saying that for the first <laughs> poll. My apologies. And let me share those results. You got through it. Identity theft. And then we see in the chat, Beth, uh, bank getting hacked or your trading. So financial services is a concern. Fortunately, there's something known as the FSISAC, Financial Services Information Sharing and Analysis Center, where they now share information and help each other because it's not a competitive advantage. And then Amanda, data brokers, like what happened with uh, Facebook? Because why is Facebook free? Well, if you're not the, if you're not paying for it, you're the product. And this, we keep saying, but it's amazing how many times we forget it. Lisa, do you have other insights you see with this that you wanted to pull out? No, I think this is spot on. Identity theft is definitely the big, is, is one of the biggest ones that I see. And we'll talk later in the discussion about ways to protect your identity and tools and tips that you can use um, to keep safe. Phishing. It continues to be one of the top vectors. I see your next uh, talk for with is on social engineering. And that's basically all it is, is trying to fool you into going to a site you shouldn't. Phishing will never go away. I'm convinced of that because it's too easy to find people's email. It's too cheap to do. And we keep sending links. So let me see, will I be able to copy that link? No, but sorry, let me go back. 
Um, I put a link on this slide that if you're daring enough, if we get a moment, I'll see if who's willing to go to it. Uh, don't trust links. But the problem is, is we will click on links. Quick story. Six, six years ago, yeah, when my son was 16, worked at a local McDonald's in the area. Two weeks after he started, he got an email that said, click here to see your paycheck. Wasn't for McDonald's, but he's like, I want to see my paycheck. How much did I earn? So we clicked here, took him to a website, not McDonald's. Input your first name, your last name, your social security number. So what did my son do? He actually stopped and asked. Yes, he's not a computer geek like me, but he knew to ask. I was so happy. Um, that actually was legit. So many people, people will think, oh, that's gotta be phishing. It was the local HR company, how they manage their franchises and how they get paychecks out to the McDonald's worker. So, uh, you know, it was a link that looked, could look suspicious. The email had at the very bottom in really tiny writing, the contact. If you follow the Better Business Bureau, and we do have a great Better Business Bureau, uh, and we do have an event on cybersecurity also coming up in October, I believe it's going to be the 22nd, they put out the message about smishing. So it's going out to website or getting a text, sorry, getting a text with that fake link to it. Lisa, are you seeing other variants associated with phishing? No, the biggest ones that I see are the, the phishing and, and whaling. Um, and what is whaling? I didn't yeah, so whaling is where there are uh, more directed attacks at your C-level executives. Yep. Going after the big fish, right? Yep. And then ransomware is very common. I had a conversation earl earlier today with the FBI, and they're still seeing this. It's you're familiar with the different AAS, you know, software as a service platform. Well, there's ransomware where it's being bought and sold on the dark net. Prolock is actually one of the hacking group that's doing that. NetWalker I just saw the story today on LokiBot is affecting people. So we, we're going to be sharing information. Uh, if you want more to learn more about ransomware, check out go, uh, nomoreransom.org. And again, please, if you're a victim or know of a victim, reach out for help. I know of a company actually up in Minneapolis. They got breached by ransomware, never said anything. They had to find $3,000 in Bitcoin. They couldn't do it. They had to feed 33 $100 bills to a Bitcoin teller in downtown Minneapolis to pay for it. And it's like, why didn't you just reach out? So that's what we're trying to do here with uh, today's talk is give you examples. In the interest of time, we won't really uh, go into specifics in each of these, but ransomware still alive and well. Uh, so let's go in next, Lisa, on some steps that we should follow. And I have a kind of a, a, an idea with presentations, you need either puppies or kittens in each presentation. So Lisa, maybe if you want to talk about what are some of the things that you think we should do? Yeah, so talking about the ransomware, um, Ron, that's a big one that, you know, that gets me or keeps me up at night is what if somebody gets my data, right? I have a lot of things on my laptop. It's not encrypted. So if somebody were to just say, hey, I got you, which hopefully that doesn't happen, but if it does, then what? Um, so some things that people can do are back up your information. I personally have a hard external hard drive. It's a physical device that connects to my laptop via USB. So I back up my data to that. It goes into my safe that then is kept, you know, in a secured place at home. So it's under lock and key. Um, you can back up stuff online, Google or other places, OneDrive, things like that. Um, so there, there are things that you can do if you're concerned about protecting your data or, you know, ransomware. I saw in the chat that, oh my gosh, my parents click on everything, right? Share this information with loved ones around you. I am constantly, and I know Ron, you are too, I'm constantly sharing information with people around me. They're like, oh, well, you know, I think my information was hacked. What should I do? I, I might be on a sandbar boating and I spend 20 minutes telling someone 
somebody about how to reach out to their bank about getting their credit froze or something like that. I mean, it's just the craziest conversations we have. But those are the things that we do to help educate others is security really is everybody's job. And then the more that we educate others and then they educate somebody else and we share the information, that's how we help stop this from spreading. So let's go to another poll. And how do you protect yourself? And then we'll talk about additional strategies. And we're seeing these in the chat, and I love it. So thank you for sharing in the chat. So Gina, if you'd be so kind with poll three. You betcha. So how do you Polling protect should be yourself open. or your loved ones? And again, pick multiple if you want. We see some great questions in the chat, though we'll have some time near the end or even during your breakout sessions. You can bring it up to others as well and share ideas, uh, such as what does Amazon or Google do with our information, um, which is a great question. And dark web, you know, is, is scary. And this is what sometimes drives some of the kids who are trying to wanting to get into this career field. So how are we looking, Gina? Well, we've got 28 of 32 people reporting, and I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one. We share those results. So what do you think, Lisa? No, no, I think it's great. Strong passwords. Ron, you and I talked about that one earlier today. We have a couple slides on that that we'll go over. So that's great to see um, such a high response, 93% saying strong passwords, which is great. And thinking before you download. So that's another one that, that's good to see a high response, right? And not oversharing. So people are, are, are here are, are definitely in tune with security, privacy, protecting their information and, and, and those around them. So, and, and if, and also, you don't, if it doesn't look right, you know, stop, stop and think before you do something. So I, I think this is spot on with, with, uh, with what I would have expected. So maybe you can talk to us about some of the laws associated with this. And what are your techniques as a mom to protect your kid? Yeah, so yeah, definitely. This is definitely what's near and dear to me is, is protecting our kids. Um, we as parents have lots of experience behind us. Um, uh, our kids don't, right? And they hear things from other kids and see other kids do it. And then they get, you know, talked into doing it because if you don't and everybody else is, then you feel left out. And so um, it, children is just, I'm very passionate about that. Um, so the CF, FAA, it, it was a Computer Fraud and Abuse Act that came out uh, that basically is protecting um, intentionally accessing computer without authorization. So that's a law. So, so they can't just say, I want access to your phone or I want access to your laptop without proper authorization. The COPA law is very important. If you're on the phone and you have loved ones or children, well, it's more children, um, they do not have a right. You as a parent have the responsibility and oversight of children zero to 13. There was an addendum uh, that was uh, put into draft. They were trying to vote on it and get it pushed through that would extend that to age 16. It was put out in 2020. It doesn't look like it's passed yet, but they are trying to get that extended to age 16, but currently it goes to age 13. So you as a parent, you do have the right to oversee what your children do. So when your child says, hey, you can't touch my phone, you can't have my password, you can't know what I'm doing, Yes, I can. I'm your parent. Whether you like it or not, you put your foot down and yes, you can. And trust me, I've had fisticuffs with my, with my child and I've stayed up late doing all their digital footprint. You'll have late nights, you'll have tears, but you'll still love each other and you'll get through it. So, um, uh, FERPA. So real quick, if you don't mind me interjecting with a story, when my son had just turned 13 or so, uh, and we talked about Facebook and Facebook friends. And I'm like, do you have any friends on Facebook you don't know? And he's like, of course, yeah, of course I know all of my friends. But well, now he doesn't. Do you know all of your friends? We have so many connections that 
are we really sure who they may be? And that's part of what COPA protects. And I don't think we necessarily need to go through all of these laws, but just I think you hit the high point here with the kids is just, you know, reaching out and being an active parent is really the number one technique I've heard over time from parents and law enforcement knowing where they're going and just being that nosy parent. Uh, Colleen asked a great question in chat. Um, and I'm glad to see someone else responded as to how, what you can use as far as what tools you can put on your devices. And I think Lisa, you'll actually be talking about that, how to, how to track, um, but maybe get into a little bit about social media at this point, because that's of course what everybody now is using, as you said, with TikTok and Snap and Insta and all of that. Yeah, so some of the things that I do with my child is, as I was saying, you know, monitor what they're doing, but my challenge was just knowing what are these new tools. Facebook's been around, so I had Facebook, but that's not what the kids are using. They're using Instagram, so I had to go learn Instagram. Um, they're using Snapchat. Don't let them fool you. Snapchats don't disappear if somebody saves it, if somebody downloads it. It, it, it. So you have to learn the technologies that the kids are learning. It was a hard lesson that I learned. Um, and, and, and so that's my advice to you. If your kid's doing it, learn it get caught up on it because they will try to pull the wool over your eyes as my child did. It's painful, but you can get through it. Um, Google location sharing is something that I would highly recommend. Um, most of us have the Google map apps on our phone. It's very easy to just turn on location sharing. You can tell it who you want to share with and then you can even tell it if you want it to just share one time for a month until you turn it back off. Um, that's another one that I use with my child to just figure out where are they in case they didn't come home. Um, we've had a couple of incidents in Omaha where kids didn't come home to their families. And if they were using Google location sharing, maybe the parents would have had more insight and could have saved some of these children um, or, or other things, right? And so that's why I get passionate about these. Um, and so also credit monitoring, right? How do we protect ourselves? People were worried about bank account information and, and things. So credit monitoring, I use Credit Karma, it's free. Uh, you can see all the accounts that you have open, what the balances are, things like that. They will also alert you if, um, if, if you have turned up in any recent data breaches. You can also file your taxes for free and your state taxes. So I have actually turned to Credit Karma for a lot of things, for credit monitoring plus other stuff. You can freeze your credit. It's a free service. Freeze your credit with all three of the credit bureaus. So that's another tool and tip that I use because then I don't have to worry like Ron showed you if I've been pwned, which you'll find my information out there and everything, I, I've been hacked. I know I have, it's sad. But if I watch my credit monitoring, I freeze my credit, they can't do anything. You have my name, you have my address, but what good is it? Because you can't go get a credit card in my name. You can't do anything financially that will harm me financially. And so that's one of the biggest things that concern me is financial harm, and I've put a stop to that. And you can do that for your kids and everything else. I have a question. We talked about this earlier. What do you think about you know, getting one of those credit monitoring services like LifeLock or the equivalent? Yeah, you can do that. They're going to, I mean... I, they're going to cost you like 25 bucks a month, but I've found these other tools that I like that are just as good and do it for free. So it's, it's a little bit more time consuming, not much, but it doesn't cost me anything. And it's right at my fingertips and I control it. Um, it's a hassle with the freezing your credit because now if I want to go get a loan for anything, I have to go unfreeze my credit, tell the bank to run my credit report when they're done, then I have to go freeze it again. So it's a hassle. I'm not going to lie. But then I know nothing else has happened, right? It's a peace of mind. So it, it, it's a trade-off. I'd like to do a shameless plug for my company. So I work for Allstate Identity Protection. We're similar to LifeLock. So all these things that you're talking about, we can freeze your credit from. So it is a paid service, but um 
you know, it's, there is backing to it too. There's insurance policies if you do get hacked. And I've been a member of this group for a long time, so I didn't just jump on here to do a shameless plug, I swear. <laughs> no, that's very important. And that's Tracy who's speaking, right? Yeah. Tracy, would you like to put the information in the chat? Oh yeah, I will. I'll add it. Thanks. And what I recommend is if you're busy or you just don't know how to look or how to check, it, for that peace of mind, using that type of service can be well worth the money because you don't know where your information may go. So to have someone watching your back uh, can be very valuable. I've had this conversation with my 88-year-old mother, and she's kind of made that decision that she can't have eyes everywhere and wants that peace of mind. So thank you for sharing that, Tracy. So, and Lisa, thanks for also bringing up, you do, if when you do apply as working for a financial institution, customers can get very upset when they apply and then you can't run their credit. Well, you put a freeze on your credit, <laughs> And so you will have to unfreeze it because we do, you know, as a lender, we need that information to make a good, good decision. And so that's, just, it is something to be aware of, but I think, you know, depending on where your risk tolerance is well worth the time investment. So we're going to be going to a breakouts here in about another eight to 10 minutes. Let's cover quickly some of the steps you can take to protect yourself. Well, first it's the idea of trust, but verify we have to trust each other. Like we're all on this call right now and it's going very nicely. So, but if you're ever in doubt, check it out, double check, be a little bit skeptical. It's okay to ask, Hey, can you, you know, can you confirm that this is really your email address? I've had to do this with a student who sent me an email from his Gmail. And I'm like, how do I know this is really the student? Cause I couldn't tell. It's okay to double check. I had once a student, getting gas and uh, there was a new reader and she couldn't tell if it was a card skimmer. So she actually went in and asked the attendant who then looked at her like she was crazy, but it was very well worth it because you don't know when there could be that card skimmer out there. The number one way to defeat social engineering, ask somebody. They don't even have to be knowledgeable in privacy and security. Just go, hey, and I like just picking on people at, at random. Hey, Jamie, yeah, I got this really weird email from the IRS saying I've been audited and I need to pay this fine in Walgreen, uh, green dot cards. Should I pay it? Of course, Jamie should say, heck no. You know, but just bouncing the idea off of someone else, very low cost, very easy to do. Virus Total, if you're not familiar with this website, if you get a weird link that you're not sure if it's good or not, uh, it's one of those link shorteners, you can put it in the URL checker and it'll check against all of the different and I'll see if the search will work. Will it work? Usually these live, yeah. What, uh, v, uh, what Virus Total does is checks against 79 different virus checkers for this website. So you can see one came up as potential phishing. Hmm. So if you want to see what this website is, remember, never click on links you're not familiar with. So I'm going to see how many of you don't click on this link. I'm just going to drive you all crazy by saying that. But virus total can check files as well because antivirus is not uh, always the best. Um, I already talked about have I been pwned? So that's virus total. So what are some other tips you want to give, Lisa? Yeah. Sorry. The, some additional tips that I would like to share, and, and I know um, I saw it come through in the chat, is just how to get rid of phishing and, and protect our devices. Um, and so I would say um, I use antivirus and protect my mobile phone the way that I protect a laptop or a workstation. And another tool for that I use on, on Android anyways, it's called Avast, A-V-A-S-T. -A um, and so when you, so that's one thing that people don't realize is that your mobile devices, they're computers. We probably do more on our mobile devices than we do on laptops anymore. Um, so that's that's one big thing that I would would keep in mind is the security and privacy of your of your mobile devices and keep those protected the same or more so than I would a laptop because I probably have more private information on my phone than I do my laptop. Lisa, maybe if you wanted to talk a little bit, well, you already did, let me just go to back, about backups, the importance of using maybe the cloud for backups. 
Yeah, so uh, it, it allows you the peace of mind of just knowing that should something happen, you have a backup. But then, um, and you have options, right? So what, what it, the backup that you're going to use depends on what you're worried about. So if you're worried about photos, you can use Google Photos. If you're worried about data, maybe you, you use like Google Drive or you use something else, like uh, OneDrive. Yeah. You know, there's there's different things. So so first, you have to to figure out what is it that I'm worried about. What type of information am I worried about? Then you figure out what tool or solution best fits me. And then you also have to determine: Do I want an online solution, or do I just like I have a hard disk drive that I put it in my safe, right? Am I okay with that, or do I want an online solution? So you got to figure out what fits your needs. And then you wanted to discuss and maybe just in a, in a minute about not only passwords but authentication I think it came up someone uses LastPass so using password managers and then using multi-factor yeah so it, it, it's always in, interesting people don't realize how quickly passwords get hacked right so they just think oh I'm going to use my first name and my birth date well look at how, this table just quickly shows you uh based on if it's numbers only, mixed characters, how complex your password may be, how quickly it can be hacked. And so the, the message that I wanted to send is use complex characters, but wherever you can, use multi-factor authentication. If the if the the application allows to send you a PIN in addition to entering a username and password. Again, it's another inconvenience, but it is also another layer of security to protect you. So every inconvenience is another security feature that also keeps those bad actors out. And I, I wish we, we had infinite amounts of time because I'm loving what I'm reading in the chat about how people are using that multi-factor authentication. And it's gotten to be very easy, uh, but passwords are still used on so many legacy systems, but encourage your financial institution and others to use multi-factor authentication because now it's just incorporated right into our lives with our phones where it's just so easy. Um, Let's talk about the upcoming National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, which is why with wanted Lisa and me to talk about this topic today, because in just a, less than a week, yeah, no, eight days, nine days, it's uh, October. And that's the designated month to focus on cybersecurity from the US government Department of Homeland Security. You can go out to staysafeonline.org and pull all sorts of free resources uh, they have different themes happening each week. If you're working in cybersecurity or privacy for your organization and you want a newsletter, they will provide you with those articles and the graphics at no charge because the message is that important. Use the hashtag BeCybersmart with your social media. Share your tips and ideas like we're seeing today with the group, group chat. Put them out on the LinkedIn and Twitter and share them. Put be, uh, hashtag be cyber smart as a part of it, because as we're sharing these ideas, we all become safer and stronger. Um, more resources that are available. Again, I'll make these slides available. And then Lisa, maybe if you want to talk about a, a resource. Um, so this one is from Department of Homeland Security, but I know you wanted to, where did it go? Cyber. What's Cyber? Yes, so this is an initiative out of Dakota State University, and it's a program to educate women and children about cyber, uh, cyber security and privacy. So I recommend going out if you have young children, especially girls, they do have a program that's coming up over winter break. I believe it's either November or December, where they're going, it's a week long program uh, for, for, for girls, and they're going to have workshops and things like that. Uh, and also connect on LinkedIn. Just Google Cyper on LinkedIn. They offer webinars every Thursday afternoon where they're um, uh, having webinars with working professional women just like us um, on how they got into cybersecurity and privacy. So it, it's another good group to follow. Very good. We have numerous other resources, but at this point, 
what do you say we go to the breakout rooms? Different topics, and you're not held to these topics. Um, you can just take what you're talking about in the chat right now. You can talk about kids' online safety or protecting your parents or other older adults, your own privacy, or how do you protect your business. As you move to the breakout rooms, and Gina, if you'd be so kind to just do that while I kind of share, uh, please share your name, your employer. If you're not comfortable, you don't have to do this. Really, this is just a way to make it a little bit more intimate. We can get to know each other uh, and share ideas and help each other out. You betcha. So I will, and I did just put the information that you had available on the breakout room topics and discussion. And absolutely, whatever you want to talk about is perfectly fine. But if you're wondering what that might be, you've got options available. So I am going to send us into six different rooms. And so there'll be four to five participants per room. I'm going to create those rooms and see if I can get them set up for seven minutes. Does that sound, sound all right? Sounds good. So you will, you can click to go to that room right away and it will bring you, it will bring you back when the room is completely done. And if you come up with a and hand it back over to Lisa and Hacker Ron and see what, <laughs> see what else they'd like to share with us tonight. I think we have a, as people are coming back, our, if we just skip ahead to poll five, the lessons learned. Absolutely. So as you're coming back, welcome back everybody. Hopefully you learned something or met someone new through the breakout sessions. And I, yeah, pill, cool. I pulled up the wrong one, didn't I? There we go. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. There we go. So do you feel better now about online safety and security? Pick one. And one of the occupational hazard that I have in teaching cybersecurity is invariably I have students who are like, now I'm really scared. And I have a feeling this will happen again to you in October with social engineering as she dives into that topic and how easy it can happen to all of us. So please take a moment to, to vote. Um, also, if you could put one thing you learned today in chat. Yep. We had one more Infotech ticket to give out, um, but we so decided it'll go to Beth Elliott. I believe that's who, uh, I was asking some really good questions in chat, like protection for iPhones. Um, I have some, and if you want to contact offline, sometimes at the ends of these presentations, it's, it's hard to remember. Or if you have solutions to this, please share them with others. So, you we know, have, what, what you've We want. have 25 responses in on the poll, so I'm going to end the polling in three, two, one and share those results. And I gotta say, I admire the honesty of, I think I'll go hide in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> and that's traditional what we may see it again, just for the fun of it. Um, thank you all for sharing what you've learned. The last point I wanna bring up and then I'll turn uh, the stage over to Lisa. Please reach out for help if you're a victim. I'll show this really quick. Oh, I already, I can't recall. If I didn't show Better Business Bureau Scam Tracker, it's a website free through the Better Business Bureau. You can see 
where scams are happening right here in Nebraska. You can report the scams and you'll, you'll notice we have a lot reported around the Omaha area. And I think it's just because we have an outstanding BBB. You can see what's happening in our area. So this is another potential resource you can use. If you are a victim, go to the FBI's Internet Crimes Complaint Center, ic3.gov.gov, and you can report it. And not guaranteed FBI will be able to investigate all of them, but that information is so important because, you know, yeah, I'm a hacker. It's kind of what I do, but I'm only the good type. There's 30 people in this room. If I steal 10 bucks from each of you, you'll probably be like, oh, I just lost 10 bucks. That's 300 bucks in my pocket. But what's the common denominator? That's the information. Or the Cybercrime Support Network. Um, Kristen Judge runs that out of uh, Michigan. Uh, she's been here to Nebraska numerous times to speak. She's a fantastic lady to connect with on LinkedIn, Kristen Judge runs the Cybercrime Support Network. If you're a victim of sexploitation, any sex crimes, um, you name all the different variants that your mind can go wild on, please report it. There are other resources uh, we can help you with. So as I said, if that's my ask out of all of this. Lisa, are there other, what other tips do you want to leave with as we're about ready to wrap this up and go to our drawing? drawing. Yeah, I, I would say um, follow me on LinkedIn, follow Ron, and share the information that you've learned here with others. Um, Ron and I are great resources for you, but we're also sharing things on our LinkedIn pages. We give presentations on other stuff. I know I have many coming up on other topics. Um, so feel free to follow us there as well to get additional information to support you as you continue on your security and privacy journey. Excellent. Well, thank you guys so much. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, oh, yep, you've got that out there. I did put out in the chat where the presentation is available mm -hmm. online. Um, so someone is wondering, should they really click on that link? And I, I, I did. So <laughs> I did. It, it, worked, it worked out fine. <laughs> and I put the full link in there and it's to Google and it should yep. be somewhat safe. 